Hello everyone, I'm Chester44 and welcome to this Let's Play of Blades of Avernum. Last episode we did some more exploring for the most part and uncovered like three maps worth of stuff. I feel like we're just blowing through this game. Now we've reached the town of Blinlock, so let's go in and take a look. See what's going on around here. We're down here in the southern edge. And then immediately go around this way. Yeah, this does look like a mining town. Oh, that's a person. You meet a wiry, perpetually annoyed woman. She paces the streets in a profoundly aggravated state. Her hands show the dirt of a lifetime's hard work. She walks up to you and looks you in the eye. Ah, the adventurers. I see you decided to stop by our little town. Call me Littleford. I'm a miner, the foreman. What is your job here in Blinlock? I'm a miner, or at least I was a foreman at the digs here. I kept the workers in line and keep up to date on the latest advancements in the field. Do you like being a foreman? Eh, tough work. Perfect for me. How are the mines? <laughs> of course, I can't do anything with those foul creatures in the pits. Anything we can help with? Ask Brown. He'll fill you in on what's going on in there. Good work for adventurers, if you know what I mean. Maybe help us out and earn some pay. There don't seem to be many other miners around. Yeah, I look after the workers, when we can get any, that is. But they left when the creatures appeared and the mines closed. Littleford continues to talk to you. She doesn't seem to have anything better to do. Yes, what else? You're the foreman here? Sure I am. I know all about mining. Brown himself brought me here to run this mi to run his mines. Iron ore, silver ore, not too bad, but we haven't dug too far yet. The monster slowed us down. While Brown finds someone to solve the problem, I've been trying to learn more about mining. You never know in these enlightened days when someone will figure out some useful trick to get the ore out faster, or save a life. What sort of information are you after? She looks you over and thinks a bit. You know, being adventurers, you might have occasion to go over to the old school of Majory. If you ever find any information there, down there that would improve our minds, bring it here. I'd make it worth your while. What can you tell us about the School of Majory? I don't know much about it. It's this old school to the northeast, closed about a century ago. The mages, they researched all sorts of things. Who knows, they might have thought about mining once or twice. We'll keep our eyes open for that. Why a traveling merchant would want to come to Skylark Vale, you have no idea. Yet here one is, ready to sell you wares. Maybe he got lost. He pulls a massive pack off his back, opens it, and bows humbly. I am Unger. Care to sample my wares, sir? What sort of merchant are you? A tinker, and more. I have all manner of wares which I've been cutting around the Vale. You're lucky to catch me. I'm often on the move. Where do you usually move about? Oh, I often move quickly between Blinlock and Morales. Sadly, business in the Vale has been very good. Why those two towns? Two towns beset by misfortune. The Vale's been very good for business. Why has business been so good? I carry some adventuring supplies, which is a very safe item to be selling in any area afflicted by troubles. Between plague, bandits, and people leaving, I've been busy, busy, busy. You must at least be making good money. Yes, but all my customers are leaving the Vale or dying, so it can't last. I'm not made glad by their misfortunes, but I'm more than happy to sell them the healing potions, weapons, and armor they need to get by. Of course, I'm busy and can't talk all day. Care to purchase something for yourself? Sure, let's trade. Oh, uh, we do have a few things we can sell. Definitely don't need the skull. We can just drop that in all honesty. Uh, we've got not much. Gold ring, basic powder, lock picks. Nothing we need to buy. Drop the skull, we don't need it. Okay. What's in here? Just some random person's house, it looks like. Nope, oh, didn't mean to do that. Eh, what the hell, let's look around in these buildings. Winstead's Bakery. This woman is clearly sick, but fortunately not with an affliction caused by the Vale's curse. She has a cold. She's kneading a large wad of bread dough and only occasionally coughs on it. 
I'm <coughs> Winstead. Welcome to my shop. You are the baker? And I tend to our, own, our town crops, and I grind meal or pay miners to help me do it. That's what I usually do, but I have all sorts of rations on top of that. Why do you make so much bread? My bread has been quite in demand in the Vale lately. Why is the demand so high? She gives you a small bit of bread to taste. It lacks the bitter, acrid smell of the rest of the Vale's food and water. Lately, the only way to get palatable food is to come to me. I don't know why, just lucky, I guess. There's a lot of demand for your goods. Yes, since the miners left, I've had to sell food to nearby towns. Do you know why the miners left? I don't know much about why. Some disturbance in the mine, I guess. <laughs> Brown would know more about that, and he's in City Hall. Winstead deals with you while continuing to make bread. You note her high level of success in her attempts to not sneeze on many of the loaves. Quite a cough you have there. She coughs, not entirely turning her head away from the dough she's kneading. Excuse me, don't mind me. I don't want to work, but if I don't, who will? Is there any way I can help you? Any jobs? She raises an eyebrow. I thought you were here to fix a curse. Surely you have better things to do than help me. Can we buy some food? We can. Wow, she's got a lot of meat. Not much bread, though. Thank you. We don't actually need to buy any. Just uncover that bit there. What have we got here? City Hall. Ah, perfect. Considering all the disasters that have beset the Vale recently, Blinlock's mayor seems rather calm and composed. He runs his fingers through his hair to make sure it's neat and leans back in his chair to speak with you. I'm Mayor Brown. Just call me Brown. Welcome to our humble little, inert little village. What is it you do for this town? Well, I'm the mayor, which means I'm the administrator for the mines. That's what the Empire sent me here for. Compared to what the rest of the Vale has endured, I'm having an easy time of it. How fares Blinlock? Oddly, we've had almost no trouble with the curse. Our water is clean, the disease is minimal. The things can get worse. Of course, the mines have been a serious problem, but nowhere near as lethal. What is happening with the mines? The mines situation can be summed up in one word. Undead. While digging in the mines, we accidentally exposed an ancient crypt. It's a standard occupational hazard. The spirit inside lost no time in killing some miners, summoning help, and taking over. I have a task for you, if you wish, with quite a reward. Tell me about the task you need done. The mines are at the northeast corner of town. Go in there and slay the foul white that summoned the undead. I will reward you well if you succeed. Beware, though, it's a nasty foe. Or so I am told. Oh, also I'll make sure that the mine is unlocked for you. Good luck to you. Ah, uh, so the curse has spared this area. Yeah, so I often wonder why the Vale has been so much worse off because of the curse. It certainly isn't our clean living. <laughs> Even our water is better. It comes from a spring in the ground just north of town. Everyone else's water comes from the river that flows from the northeast. That water is foul. Well, that's good to hear. We are doing all right for what little that's worth. Interesting. These bookshelves were intended to store records. The Empire is run by meticulous people. However, the shelves are empty. The mayor must have found a better use for the paper. Well, the sign did say records, so let's just take a look. Illicit magic. <laughs> and a candle. Okay, what is illicit magic? Parallels of illicit magic. The Empire has restricted access to magic for many years, for a wide variety of good reasons. And yet shifty people keep using the magical arts without permission. Fortunately, there are ways to determine whether the people around you, maybe even your own neighbor or mother, may be an illegal spellcaster. Some signs are... Yeah. Alright, not gonna look into that. Uh, what's over here? Van the Tinker. Apparently Van the Tinker decided to leave, or die. Crude crossbow. We can sell that. And here is... The writing on this sign has been scratched off. Well, whoever was in here left. Well, here's a Here's a little area that's taken over. Ooh, cloak. Who needs the better cloak? You need the better cloak! Draco has a cloak. 
It's not the better cloak. Crude dagger and toadstools. Ooh, toadstools are actually something for, uh... Yeah, grab them. Also, wear the better pants. And coins, and you also wear the better cloak. Alright, and anything in this one? Some miners have abandoned these barracks. It's dusty. There are small droppings on the floor in the corners. You hear squeaking. Which means there's rats in here somewhere. Probably down in here! I was right. <laughs> feeling. We got an emerald and a silver necklace. Nice. Alright. Before we go in, let's take a look at what's over... Wait, what's this? Miner's Hall. The Blinlock mine's been closed down for a while. The stuff in the storeroom is covered with cobwebs and dust. Is there anything in here of use? Poor leather helmets, cloaks, sandals, lamps... Silver ore. I mean, that actually does have value. We may actually pick up any ore we find in there. Uh, looks like there's something else over here. Let me guess, the end? Blinlock Foundry. I was wrong! This is one of the entirely inadequate number of people running the foundry and the smithy. He nods to you, wipes some sweat off his forehead, says you should talk to Kilborn, and gets back to work. Kilborn, eh? We can do that. The foundry is currently being run by a skeleton crew. Sweaty men haul sacks of ore into the cauldrons, where the metal is drawn out and formed into bars. When the man in charge sees you, however, he immediately ceases his labors to speak with you. He is eager to meet an adventurer, especially one who wants to help the valley. I'm Kilborn. I just wanted to welcome you, and tell you anything I can to help. Which might be something, I'm sure. Can we make this quick? We're short-handed today. What's your job here? I'm in charge of the foundry. We process ore, and we make weapons. I have some for sale, you should know, but that's not the reason I wanted to discuss things with you. How's the foundry doing? Only a few of us are keeping it running. Most people left when the mines closed. Not much metal to process, but it keeps me busy. What's going on in the mines? Uh, you should talk to Bran about that in City Hall. He's in the market for some adventurers. Kilborn continues to direct the activities in the small foundry, occasionally pitching in to haul ore himself. He trades a few words with you when he has a moment to spare. Can we do some shopping? We can. Nothing I want to buy. Do you know anything about the curse? I hadn't come up to Blainlock yet, but it's keep creeping closer. You're here to remove the curse. Well, we've all suffered by it, but I've noticed something. Nobody here seems too inclined to figure out its origins. Do you know about the origins? He smiles somewhat smugly. I have thought about it. I don't have any answers, but I believe asking the right questions is an important step in solving any problem. I have five questions about the curse which must be answered if it is to be removed. What are your five questions? Questions about the cause, the timing, the effect, the placement, and the solution. What do you know about of the cause? Nothing. But the effect was so powerful and so long-lasting, something very impressive must have brought it about. Why haven't we seen it? What did you notice about the timing? Nothing unusual happened when the curse started. It just appeared out of nowhere. Isn't that peculiar? What have the effects been? A bitter burning water was the first thing anyone noticed as being unusual. Why the water? What happened to it? The placement of the curse anywhere would have been unfortunate. Yes, but why Skylark Vale? Why not somewhere else? What do we have that makes us different from the other boring, dull, backwater places the Empire is full of? Well, there is a Swill Majory. Yes, that does make us different. My bare investigation. Finding the solution is where I come in. Yes, indeed. How can the curse be removed? To answer that, you must go to the source. Once the first four questions are answered, the fifth should be easy. If 
Finding answers won't be easy. The answers are your job. That they are. And it does seem like we did go to the, uh, to the School of Majory way too soon. That must be the final place we go to. So we're going to keep exploring elsewhere around here before we go back in there. But first, let's see if we can figure out the mine here. All right, in we shall go. You enter the Blinlock Mines for the first time. It's unusually cold inside, and you detect the familiar and unwelcoming smell of decay. And not much in here, it looks like. A couple torches. Poor leather helmet. I guess grab a torch, and we'll use that. Just so we have some better lighting. I see you there. Skeletons and zombies. Easily slain, at least. Alright, that's those. Well, we hit a, killed a ghoul. Silver coins out here. Silver ore. I am going to grab all the silver ore I can to sell it. Spirits! That's not pleasant. That's definitely not pleasant. Oh, wait, we summoned by the spirit. Okay, then. Excellent, there goes that guy. That's definitely less pleasant. There goes that ghoul. Alright. It looks like the miners disturbed an old crypt where they were digging down here. This, combined with some old hostile magic, must be the source of the undead lurking down here. Disturbing long-buried magic is one of the many occupational hazards associated with being a miner. And it's dead! That was easy. And we got a crude crossbow, some iron bolts, a cloak, and earrings. Well, we can sell some of those. Anything else here? Yeah, there's a few things we can sell here. Including all of the silver ore. There we go. That was very easily dealt with. Let's just sell all this stuff we have here. Alright then. Now turn in the quest. I have killed the white in the mine. Good news at last. You destroyed the evil creature. As a reward, let me give you a piece of Blenlock's fine craftsmanship. He has an aid bring you a lovely broadsword. Thank goodness, at least, at last, some good news in this valley. A bronze greatsword, eh? Not something we're going to use. We're going to sell it because I don't... Because I prefer swords and sh sword and shield. Sword and board. So, we'll sell it. There we go. Alright. We still have plenty of time, and we've already completed Blinlock, so... I guess we'll explore around a bit more. Actually, I'm curious about what's on the south side here, so... Yeah, what the hell. Let's cross over and take a look. Didn't mean to go in there. And I apologize for all the sniffing. Alright. Alright, let's take a look. See what's on this side of this particular region. And there's something up here. At the end of this long, winding valley, you see an enormous nest. It has been built from trees and boulders, carried up here by something frightfully strong. It looks old and abandoned, so you move closer. Unfortunately, looks were deceiving. When you get close, a huge reptilian head rises out of the nest. 
It's a drake, a full 40 feet from head to tail, and it's staring right at you. Drakes are vicious, bloodthirsty creatures. However, oddly, this one doesn't seem to want to attack you. It's just, it's just watching you. You can't help but wonder why. Approach. You walk up to the drake. When you do, it surprises you by bowing its head in greeting. I am Zorvas, it says in a peculiar accent. I am here in the hopes of finding help, and my luck is here in you. It's hard to understand him. I am here to be striving for completing the test to be a great drake lord. But there is one thing I am never finding in thirty years of looking. I need the tooth of a drake lord. I cannot this find. If you can be bringing this, I will reward you well and give you no harm. This a drake's oath, I swear. He then pulls in his wings and lowers himself back into his nest. Okay, we'll see if we can find a drake's tooth. There's clearly something over here. Interesting. Still looking. Still exploring. Didn't mean to do that. And that's pretty much this side of the area. Ah, looks like we found another the other town. Oh! You wouldn't have noticed it if you weren't right on top of it. It's a small valley, concealed from view by rubble and small stands of trees. It's very quiet and peaceful, but it's not unoccupied. You smell smoke, and you think that you can hear voices coming from somewhere. We'll come back here later. I have a feeling we may have a quest for it down over here. As you cross the bridge, mist from the river below settles on your skin. It burns your eyes and makes your skin itch. You shudder to think what effect drinking it must have. The water is also eating away at the bridge supports. Another year or two and this bridge will be gone. Morale is two miles south, Linlock thirty miles east. There are some guards from the village of Morales up here. They aren't much for small talk. Apart from some warnings about goblins, they don't have anything to say to you. Well, I guess we can explore Morales soon. Oh! There's a little something over here. Hmm. No, I thought there might have been something there, but... What's in here? There's a druid living here. She is kneeling outside, busily planting a small row of comfrey root. Deer graze happily around her. As you approach, she, she sees you and waves. For whatever reason, she seems to want to talk to you. Approach her. The druid stands up and greets you. As she does, bluebirds land on her shoulders and chirp a happy song. Deer walk up and nuzzle against her. It's rather dramatic. Welcome, bold saviors. Word of your arrival has reached me here. I am Athia, guardian of the Vale. Alas, sadly, my efforts to end the curse afflicting us have been in vain. A chipmunk runs up and sits on her foot. Fortunately, you have come. I wish to help you if I can, so that you can save our Vale before my magic fails. I know how to create some herbal concoctions that you may be able to use in your travels. Do you wish to learn how to make them? Yes, I would. Sure. Energy potion. Uh, doesn't matter who. Easy potion. And... You know, we'll save... We'll save up our gold before we go for the strength potion. We'll keep you in mind, though. Thank you. What does this say? Warning, Goblin Infestation Official Empire Notification, G-O-B-L-B-I-S-C-K-129. Warning, Goblin's Valley. Stay away or die. Good to know. Nothing over there. It's the far end of the river. Alright, well, um... No, I'm going to end this episode here. Next episode, we'll take a look at Morales, see how they're faring. Probably not very well. That'll be in the next episode. So until then, I'm Chester 44. That is Fox, Sheik, Bonnie, and Draco. This has been a Blades of Avernum Let's Play, and I shall see you all next time.